20, The Sandlot The early 90s were a great time to be a kid watching movies. Critics be damned, we will always have a soft spot for the little rascals and little giants. But when it comes to childhood classics from that decade, The Sandlot reigns supreme. Man, this is baseball. You gotta stop thinking. You just have fun. Set in the summer of 1962, the film is a coming-of-age story about a ragtag bunch of young boys in California with a passion for baseball. Nostalgic and timelessly sweet, it's the sort of film that will take you back to your youth, regardless of when you grew up. This way! Sandlot! Shortcut, you guys! Let's go! The Sandlot is a tale of childhood mischief, teamwork, and the value of friendship, but more importantly, it's just a whole lot of fun. Number 19. About a Boy an adaptation of Nick Hornby's popular novel, About a Boy tells the story of the carefree and immature Will Freeman, played by Hugh Grant at his absolute best. Why should I? We're poor. You're rich. You pay. You can bring a little boy if you like. I don't mind. That's really big of you. Fine. Come around at half past twelve or something. Remember where we live. Flat 2, 31 Cresfield Road, Islington, London, N1 2SF. England, the world, the universe. Yeah. When he forms an unlikely friendship with a 12-year-old boy named Marcus, he finds himself learning about responsibility and accountability. At the same time, Will becomes a role model to Marcus, and a rock in the boy's relatively unstable life. The film perfectly blends humorous moments with drama, and proves that friendship comes in all shapes and sizes. Number 18. The Untouchables This 2011 French buddy comedy is the perfect pick for anyone who needs some help looking on the explores the bond between a quadriplegic millionaire, Philippe, and an ex-con who becomes his caretaker, Dries. Though the two men make for an unlikely pair, their time together gives birth to a powerful friendship, one that transcends their many differences. Paramount to the film's success is how it manages to navigate sensitive subject matter while still delivering plenty of laughs. It actually got a 2019 remake entitled The Upside, starring Brian Cranston and Kevin Hart. Okay, what do you think of when I say the word food? I think, don't pitch me a restaurant. But as is usually the case with remakes of hit international films, it cannot hold a candle to the original. Number 17. Rudy For anyone who's ever felt like they weren't good enough, particularly on the sports field, this film is for you. After high school, I'm going to play football at Notre Dame. <laughs> You're going to play football at Notre Dame? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to buy a mansion on Lakeshore Drive. This biographical film starring Sean Astin tells the inspiring story of Daniel Rudiger. Although short and relatively unathletic, Rudy has one goal, to play college football at the University of Notre Dame. Despite the obstacles, his unparalleled passion drives him to reach for his dream. While Rudy is a sports film, it's also a depiction of the capabilities of the human spirit and what somebody can accomplish through pure commitment and dedication. Congratulations, you are I did it! Number 16. Little Miss Sunshine Sometimes a film about family dysfunction can be straight up depressing. You've taken a vow of silence? Yeah. He's gonna join the Air Force Academy, become a test pilot, and he's taken a vow of silence until he reaches that goal. You're kidding. This is not the case with Little Miss Sunshine. The film follows the Hoovers, a clan that includes an overworked mother, her gay and suicidal brother, her egotistical husband, his foul-mouthed father, and their two children, Dwayne and Olive. When they discover that Olive has earned a spot in the Little Miss Sunshine beauty pageant, they cram into a VW microbus and travel across the country to get there in time. The film emphasizes the importance of being yourself, but also how valuable it is to have a family, even though you may not get along all the time. Um, I'd like to dedicate this to my grandpa, who showed me these moves. Oh, that, oh, that is, is so, so sweet! sweet. <laughs> is he here? Where's your grandpa right now? in the trunk of our car. Number 15, Cool Runnings. The second sports film to make our list, Cool Runnings tells the story of the first ever Jamaican bobsled team. If you speed demons can't whip off an even six flat, 
then you have a better chance of becoming a barbershop quartet. John Candy stars as Irv Blitzer, a coach who agrees to turn track and field runners into Bob's letters. Naturally, some unconventional approaches to training ensue. It's a classic tale of David and Goliath, with the Jamaican team the clear underdogs. We won't spoil the ending in case you haven't seen it, but rest assured it's both true to life and extremely satisfying. This film is for anyone who's ever had their dreams laughed at, and proves that hard work and commitment are nothing to scoff at. Luis, you're dead? No, ma. I'm not dead. I have to finish the race. Number 14, Billy Elliot. Who could have predicted that the story of a young, working-class British boy who learns ballet could have such universal appeal? And one, and two, and three, and four, and five boots off, seven and eight. What size are you? Miss, what about the keys? Into the center. The film is set during the minor strike of the mid-1980s and follows the titular Billy Elliot as he explores his passion for ballet. Given the time period and his socio-economic background, this earns him much mockery, scorn, and raised eyebrows, including outright objections from his own father. But as this film reminds us, despite all the bumps, scrapes, bruises, and hurt feelings along the way, nothing can stand between a person and their dreams. Excuse me. Can you tell Billy Elliot that his family is here? A young Jamie Bell received much praise for his role as Billy, and the film was met with widespread critical acclaim. Number 13, Jerry Maguire. A comedy drama centered around a sports agent might not sound like the most obvious candidate for a feel-good film. What you gonna do, Jerry? Show me the money! Congratulations, you're still my agent. And quite frankly, protagonist Jerry Maguire has a knack for rubbing people the wrong way. But such is the strength of the performance delivered by Tom Cruise that you can't help but be utterly charmed. Sure, Jerry's got a big ego, and he's a little too good of a smooth talker, but damn if he doesn't have heart. The standout performances of Renee Zellweger and Cuba Gooding Jr. only serve to further bolster this feel-good film. For anyone who's ever dreamed of quitting an unsatisfying job to strike out on their own, this is for you. You complete. Just had shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. Number 12, Love Actually. While most films on this list convey one clear, uplifting message, Love Actually has a plot line for just about everyone. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that Love Actually is all around. The importance of family, relationships, and friendship are all on display in this holiday classic. The charming ensemble cast includes Hugh Grant, Colin Firth, Emma Thompson, Kira Knightley, Liam Neeson, and of course, the late, great Alan Rickman. It's the perfect rom-com to cure any holiday blues. Plus, who could ever forget Hugh Grant as the Prime Minister dancing down the stairs to jump for my love? Oh, don't wait up. Number 11, Mean Girls. Infinitely quotable, razor sharp, and boasting knockout performances all around, Mean Girls is the sort of film that never gets old. Hey, 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 how are my best girlfriends? My name is George. The movie follows Katie Heron as she tries to acclimatize to high school in the U.S. after 12 years of homeschooling abroad with her parents. Ignorant of the cutthroat world of teenagers, she soon gets a crash course in the high school experience courtesy of her new friends Janice and Damien, as well as some harsher lessons from a group of girls dubbed The Plastics. Okay, you should just know that we don't do this a lot, so this is like a really huge deal. We want to invite you to have lunch with us every day for the rest of the week. Oh, it's okay. Cool, miss. So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Tina Fey wrote the screenplay, and her trademark wit is very much on display, carefully balanced with some important messages about the way we treat one another. It's honestly just a blast of a film start to finish. Number 10, Paddington 2. We said no animated films, but there's no rule about CGI bears in an otherwise live-action movie. The first Paddington, released in 2014, was an incredibly heartwarming family film in its own right. <laughs> Would you mind if I call you back? 
I think I may be about to shave a customer. Oh, thank goodness. With the sequel, the filmmakers somehow managed to improve the formula in every regard. Paddington gets himself into stickier situations than in the previous film, and with his good-natured approach to life, has the opportunity to touch the hearts of even more people. This is a movie that, while not without its tear-jerking moments, is brimming with positivity and uplifting messages. Afternoon, chaps. If you ask me, the, the pink really brightens the place up a bit. Through its titular bear, it reminds us to always look for the best in people and to never compromise when it comes to kindness. In short, it's sweet as marmalade. Number 9. Life is Beautiful A feel-good film set during World War II and largely taking place in a concentration camp? Every day we will give the classification generale to that you are talking about. The last classification will be attacked with a cartel with the name ASINO, here, on the screen. Did you have any of our famous Deutsches Vaterland to work? Sounds like an inherent contradiction, but such is the magic of Roberto Benigni's Life is Beautiful. The film tells the story of Guido Orefice, a Jewish-Italian man who uses the power of imagination to keep up the spirits of his young son after they're taken by the Nazis. The film doesn't shy away from the horrors of the Holocaust, but it does manage to find beauty, love, and joy even in the darkest of places. In no small part thanks to the power of Roberto Benigni's Academy Award-winning performance. As a whole, the film makes for heartwarming viewing in times of crisis. Number 8. Amélie Sometimes when you're feeling blue, all you need is a film with stunning imagery and a beautiful setting, which is exactly what Amélie provides. Seul le premier homme à avoir pénétré à l'intérieur du tombeau de tout en camon pourrait comprendre l'émotion d'Amélie, tandis qu'elle découvre cette cachette au trésor qu'un petit garçon a pris soin d'enfouir il y a une quarantaine d'années. Set in Paris, the film follows Amélie Poulain, a lonely romantic who vows to bring happiness to others by helping them as much as she can. C'est incroyable ce qui vient de m'arriver. Ça doit être mon ange gardien, c'est pas possible autrement. Played by the absolutely charming Audrey Tautou, Amélie succeeds in bringing joy to others around her, and eventually falls in love herself. This film is perfect for anyone who's feeling lonesome or upset over a relationship. When it comes to romance, the French do it right. Number 7. Mrs. Doubtfire Robin Williams posing as an old Scottish lady? I thought I gave it to you, dear. No. Oh. Doubtfire. I beg your pardon? Doubtfire, dear? Mrs. Doubtfire. Well, I look forward to meeting you. Oh, lovely, dear. Me too. Bye-bye. Ta-ta. That's sure to boost anyone's spirits. William stars as Daniel Hillard, a devoted but irresponsible father. After his wife divorces him, he poses as a nanny to spend time with his children. Hey, points for perseverance and determination. The film picked up an Oscar in two Golden Globes and is on the American Film Institute's 100 Years 100 Laughs list. Williams' performance keeps the laughs and feels coming right until the credits roll. It's a film that shows that love and family will prevail, regardless of distance and living arrangements. Listen, I would do anything. I just wanted to be with him. You know, I need that, sir. We have a history. And I just... They mean everything to me, and they need me as much as I need them. Number 6. Field of Dreams Perhaps overlooked by non-baseball fans, Field of Dreams offers plenty of inspiration for a wide audience. Kevin Costner stars as Ray Kinsella, a farmer who turns his cornfield into a baseball field after a mysterious voice tells him to do so. If you build it, you will come. Thematically, the movie explores father-son relationships and how we deal with missed opportunities. But above all, it's about following your dreams. Mind you, if your dream does involve plowing over several acres of your own crops to build a baseball field, you may have watched this movie too many times. What this movie has for everyone, however, is a powerful message about listening to your heart. Is, is this heaven? It's Iowa. Number 5. Back to the Future a light-hearted sci-fi classic and a go-to for many families on a lazy Sunday afternoon, Back to the Future is truly a one-of-a-kind film. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey! Think with fly. Think. The laughs can be enjoyed by all ages, and the plot is just complicated enough to keep adults engaged without losing the kids. 
rarely has there been an odd couple easier to watch or root for than Doc Brown and Marty McFly. Thanks to Robert Zemeckis' deft direction and screenplay, the narrative moves along at a quick pace, but somehow still finds time for numerous fun-loving moments that never get old, like Marty's performance of Johnny B. Good. Jock, Jock, it's Marvin! Your cousin, Marvin Barry! You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this! Back to the Future is sure to put a smile on your face, whatever timeline you're watching in. Number 4. Groundhog Day What would you do if you were stuck reliving the same day over and over again? Seduce people? Learn another language? Hey! Phil? Phil? Hey! Phil Connors! Ned? These are just some of the things that weatherman Phil Connors is able to accomplish while he's trapped in a time loop of never-ending February the 2nds. Bill Murray is at his deadpan best as Connors, and Andy McDowell also gives a fantastic performance as his love interest, news producer Rita Hansen. Groundhog Day is a film that manages to be both witty and sweet, hilarious and philosophical, and like Phil Connors' February the 2nd, it never gets old. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say, you little brat? You have never thanked me! I'll see you tomorrow! Number 3. The Princess Bride This 1987 film is a masterpiece of fantasy comedy. Directed by Rob Reiner and starring Carrie Elwes and Robin Wright, it tells the story of a humble farmhand and his quest to rescue Princess Buttercup, the love of his life. Farm boy, fill these with water. Please. As you wish. Though only a modest box office success at the time of its release, it became a cult classic on home video, and in 2016, was inducted into the National Film Registry. The movie never lets up for a second, delivering unforgettable lines of dialogue and rapid-fire wordplay, as well as memorable sword fights, visual gags, and larger-than-life villains, all the while maintaining a real sense of heart. I will go up to the six-fingered man and say, Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Try getting through this movie without cracking a smile. It's nigh impossible. Number 2. Forrest Gump Two movies in our top five? Director Robert Zemeckis clearly has a knack for feel-good films. As our titular hero famously says, My mom always said, Life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Be that as it may, you know exactly what you're going to get when you sit down to watch this film. Regardless of how many times you've seen it, you're guaranteed to laugh, cry, and reflect on what really matters in life. Forrest Gump might be slow-witted, but he's got a heart of gold and an indomitable will. He does what's right, speaks his mind, and is kind to a fault. And as the overarching plot of this film reminds us, even the humblest of individuals can do great things even change the course of history. God, what's your sole purpose in this army? To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant? God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You know, if you'd said to me, hey Rebecca, what's your favorite category of movie? I never would have said feel-good movies, but honestly, a lot of my faves are on here, so I guess I do like a good feel-good flick. Our number one will almost definitely make you cry if you're anything like me, but in the end, it is a feel-good story. So let's look through the very solid honorable mentions, and then we'll name our top pick. I want a palimony agreement, and I want one now. Well, I don't have a palimony agreement on me right now. Is tomorrow all right? Don't use that tone to me. What tone? That sarcastic, contemptuous tone that means you know everything because you're a man, and I know nothing because I'm a woman. You're not a woman. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> with me? Nothing. I'm difficult. You're challenging. I'm too structured. I'm completely closed off. But in a good way. No, no, no. I drove him away. You believe this? Huh? It's about the size of a cigar. Do I stutter? <laughs> He 
You can call me. Okay. Baby, how you feeling? You're probably going to miss these mornings that we spend together, right? Stop. One, it's a wonderful life. There's nothing quite like a nostalgia trip to the golden age of Hollywood cinema to make you smile. Brain is always a good choice, but the honor of best feel-good movie has to go to It's a Wonderful Life. I, I want a big one! What'd you stop it for? I want you to take a good look at that face. Who is it? George Bailey. The film's message is right in the title. After he and his uncle misplace $8,000, George Bailey wishes he'd never been born. His guardian angel Clarence shows him what the world would have been like if George had never existed, and how his life affected so many others. The importance of friendship is the central theme of this film, and as Clarence writes to George at the end of the film, no man is a failure who has friends. Can't Janie, Janie, Tommy. Oh, look at you. Oh, I could eat you up. Where's your mother? She went looking for you. With Uncle she... Billy. Daddy! Zozo, Zozo, my little ginger snap. How do you feel? Fine. 